Hello. behind the scenes of an adult bookstore. So this really means, what do the researchers see when they go behind the scenes of an adult bookstore? Um, so, uh, yes, I did this while I was trying to get my doctorate. Uh, I worked in an adult bookstore. I was really looking at the intersection of gender and sexuality. Um, uh, so I was a cashier for nine months on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to midnight. It was a college town in Oklahoma, so as you can imagine, <laughs> the pornography laws affected the inventory. It was very interesting. Most of the time when people think of an adult bookstore, they're thinking of things like books, magazines, movies, arcade. Now that I look at this picture, what, what, it didn't rate a triple X, there was just a double X, I don't know what that means. I, but so, so I don't know what was going on there. So, it, but there was not these racks and racks of magazines. We had things like this. It was just uh, all kinds of toys and things. So it probably affected the clientele, which was just very, very interesting. So I wanted to look at, who visited the store? What was the demographics of the people? What did they do when they came in there? What did they look at? What did, what did they t talk about? Who were they with? What did they, did they buy things? What? So I had over like a thousand hours of qualitative observations, uh, notes, uh, some quantitative information too. Uh, so who visited? There were 3,600 unique visits. So that could have been. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so that uh, a visit could have been uh, a single person or uh, somebody coming in with someone else. About a third of those were males by themselves. A third of them were male and female pairs. I don't know if they were couples. I don't know if they were friends. A third of those were six other combinations of people. The, the most of those were females by themselves. I divide those up into male, and female uh, by themselves. Sixty percent were males. Thirty-five percent were females by themselves. So we're talking about what happens. I'm, I'm a sociologist, by the way. My doctorate's in sociology. Negotiating deviant identities, private behavior in public spaces. This is fascinating to me. This is fascinating to me. This is <laughs> fascinating. So Scott and Lyman talk about accounts. Accounts. This is when people violate social norms. They, have, they feel like they have to give some kind of public, uh, some kind of, they have to talk about why they did it. Okay, nobody thinks they're the bad guy. They gotta talk about why did they do it. Everybody does it. Next time you play Never Ever Have I Ever, I promise you somebody's gonna t somebody just un is gonna say, well, this is why I this is why I did it. Okay, so justification or excuses. Sykes and Motz, I talked about it, criminology, denial of responsibility, denial of injury. So I found people talk about attributing responsibility of others. People would come up and buy something and they'd say, This is not for me, it's a gag gift for my friend. Um, claim of transference, people wanted to uh, know things like people, where do I go to the strip club, or where do I get uh, some kind of street drugs, something like that. So it was usually women doing this, usually men doing that. This was the first study of adult bookstore by uh, gender difference. Uh, that was that was the end. Well, we talked about this a little bit. So yeah, I guess the fun thing was this was in a, a um, uh, in uh, Oklahoma. Yes. I just realized that I was in Oklahoma not too long ago. These stores actually do still exist. <laughs> uh, and uh, most of the people that go want pornography, they go to Texas to get the pornography. Uh, but in Texas, um, they come to Oklahoma to get things like this. So it's kind of a trade. Um, I don't know, because it's not legal in Texas. Yeah. Um, pe Penis-shaped. Uh, objects. It's <laughs> but, but you know the thing is you can get it on the internet but if you want it immediately it, it, <laughs> so, okay so this is the breakdown uh, you know so but this is if you if you break these down uh, male female this is how it was so but I wanted to get this in more detail so as I was saying, I wanted to say, you know, people do this in their everyday lives. This is not, you know, if we wanted to say uh, how we act, uh, we all give accounts, uh, denial of responsibility, denial of injury. So uh, like the Sykes and Mata took this to criminals and said, well, uh, criminals even don't say, you know, we're bad people, unless unless you're a psychopath. <laughs> you know, they, they don't have the same kind of morals. But, you know, denial of responsibility is something like, oh, well, I was just in the car uh, when they wanted to go rob the convenience store. I, you know, I, I didn't have anything to do with it. 
Donald injury would be something like, um, they're going to get all the money back from the insurance. Uh, it, it, so I didn't really hurt anybody. So these same things are something like people study, just trying to figure out how people manage their identities when they do something that they know is a disruption in the moral fabric. And so people don't really have different um, different moral values they know uh, when, they, when they're going about their, their uh, everyday lives. And so, so I'm, uh, I was taking these things, these ideas, and, and to see how people negotiate their identities uh, there. And so there were all kinds of things I found. Like I said, I, I can only talk about just a couple. Uh, and these were just some of the things I found. So people were in there, and they, so they would say, you know, I just, I'm only here because, you know, my husband brought me here. Uh, you know, my boyfriend brought me here. Yeah. Hey, y'all, she's talking. <laughs> My husband brought me here. My, you know, my boyfriend brought me here. Uh, I'm only buying this as a gag gift for my friend. Uh, mostly, it was women that said this. There were occasionally men that said it, but usually it was the women that would uh, give these verbal accounts. Uh, and this was something that um, this was the this uh, the first study of an adult bookstore that focused on gender differences in, in women's uh, behavior in, in an adult bookstore. Uh, in, the reason that I studied sexuality was because I, I wanted to learn how this type of uh, information uh, was, how it fed back, fed back into our, how it fed back into um, what we know about, uh, I guess, sexism, and especially I was learning about how rape myths uh, are tied to um, how rape myths are tied back to female sexuality and our attitudes toward female sexuality. And um, so I started studying all kinds of things. And one of the things I did, of course, is work in an adult bookstore. And um, so, so, and so, you know, I learned different things about how men and women negotiate their sexual identities. And so, uh, yeah.